everybody. Welcome to the Good Evening Kitties podcast, a Tales from the Crypt review. My name is Melissa, your ghost is with the mostest. And today's episode is season four, episode 12, Strung Along. And today I have with me return guest, my friend Adami. What's up, Adami? I have been strung along into this episode, so I'm here against my will, being held hostage by the ghostess with the mostess herself. Did you just come up with that? Or yes. Was that? Oh, okay. That was literally improvised right there. Well, that, that was pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, before we get started, you were suggesting we do some ASMR, right? Uh, I have some combos in a bag. It sounds really good. Y- yes, I, w- I was really hoping to get some ASMR done. Um, <laughs> I think it's very soothing and um, it's good for the soul. You guys like that? Does it make you tingly? Isn't that what it's supposed to do? <laughs> Don't burn my pop filter. <laughs> These matches are probably really gone. Gone. Okay. <laughs> Okay, all right, well, that was ASMR Corner. So, we are doing this in a different location. We're actually in my living room on the couch. It's a little comfier. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just have the recording of the episode going on the screen. So, as always, John Kassir does the voice of the Crypt Keeper, and Danny Elfman does the theme song. This episode aired September 2nd, 1992. It is directed by Kevin Yager, who also directed... Yager. Dang it! Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Was directed by Kevin. Yeager. <laughs> it's directed by Kevin Yeager, who also directed uh, the episode Lower Birth that I did with my mom. Uh, the screenplay is by Yale Udoff and Kevin Yeager. That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. It stars Donald O'Connor from musicals such as Singing in the Rain, and Patricia Charbonneau from movies like Desert Hearts and K2, and Zach Galligan, who was Billy from Gremlins and in the movie Waxwork. Now I'll read the description here on the back of the box. A tale of murder with strings attached. An aging puppeteer suspects his much younger wife has a lover. Ooh, but before we get Gasp. into it, let's talk about Donald O'Connor. So when you told me we we're going to watch this episode, I was like, is anyone famous in it? And you were like, it's got the k- Billy from Gremlins. You know him, right? And I'm like, sure, why not? And then I ca- turn it on and it has freaking Donald O'Connor from one of the best movies I've seen, Singing in the Rain. So I go from watching him, you know, kicking flips off a wall and doing Make Him Laugh to playing an old sad man who <laughs> clearly does not want to be in this episode. <laughs> and I guess he was running out of money in his old age. And it was like, yeah, I'll do some Tales from the Crypt. I was only dancing with Gene Kelly a few short decades ago. Yeah, and I hadn't seen Singing in the Rain. I knew of it. I've known the songs and things like that. And so Adami just got done showing me Make Him Laugh. It's very cute. He does a very good job. He's all over the place. So if you've never, I have to put it on my list of oh, yeah. things to watch. I don't know why I haven't seen it yet. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started. We'll talk about mm-hmm. some puppets. Let's see. Where did I put the remote? Nope, not that one. Here it is, right by me. So it starts out with the Crypt Keeper, of course. He's in the crypt. He's tied up on a, uh, it has a name. It's like the thing where his arms and his legs are tied up, and I think a they can gurney? stretch you. No. no, it's got a special name. Anyway, yeah, the jokes here, he, apparently he hurt his neck, and so he called his Cairo Hector yes. to straighten him out. <laughs> <laughs> and I think of the episodes I've seen, this has the worst opening and closing jokes yeah. ever. So much, like, I get Cairo Hector. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I just had no idea what the other jokes meant. I have to pay the marionette or whatever he said at the end yeah I, I didn't really get his jokes here i think they were talking about marrying it is what it is i think it was like a really yeah. they were really stretching it like get it stretching, stretching it, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay i'm gonna look that up real quick because i gotta know what that thing's called it's a torture device it's like you got your feet and your hands tied and then they can stretch you and the little the little chiropractor guy's real cute he's like a bones like a burnt little skeleton well melissa looks that up <laughs> i'm gonna talk to you about the power of prayer <laughs> Do you even know anything about that? No, I don't pray, so I have no power. But I should pray. Pray to the Dark Lord. Hail Satan. Also Betty White. Hail Betty White. Yes, all hail Betty White. Oh, it's just called a rack. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so it's a rack. He's on a rack. He's not in a rack, but he's on a rack. It's actually pronounced Iraq, but okay. Shh, it was a joke. Mom's a joke. 
Yeah, well. Okay, so he brings in the episode, and they also do, in the intro and the exit, outro, whatever, they do a really good close-up of the Crypt Keeper's face. I always love, like, they're really going at it with the eyebrows, and it looks really neat. I like it. I always like what they do with him. Uh, so it starts out here, and it starts with, like, an old clip from, like, the 50s, 60s, where it's these old puppets. And it's, like, kind of like Howdy Doody yeah. kind of thing, where there's, like, a clown, Coco is the clown, and then his friend Clyde, who's, like, a little cowboy... What's the matter? I thought I left my dog here, Cuckoo. You left your dog here? But Clyde, can't you read? This is a no barking zone. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, kiddo. I bet the cops collared him. Well, we better get to the pound. Hope you had a good time, kids. And remember, wherever you may go, Whatever you may seek, we'll all get together same time next week. <laughs> I just very over the top bad jokes like, "Where's my dog? I don't know, but it's a no barking zone." Yeah. Like what, staring ha, at the ha, camera. Ha. And then, and this is when I saw. I'm like, "Oh crap! That's Donald O'Connor." Yeah, he <laughs> pops out all young. Well, well, they put some rouge on his cheeks, so yeah, he's young. Yeah. But I was like, oh, she should have mentioned this to me. Yeah, I didn't realize. I, later when I was looking up the stuff, yeah, I saw it, but I really didn't think it would have that much of an mm-hmm. impact on you. So I was wondering what kind of episode this was going to be like. Is this whole thing going to be in black and white set in the 40s? And they cut to him. I'm yeah. like, oh, he don't look bad for like late 60s. No. And so, he's yeah, he's just watching the old tapes of him and kind of reminiscing and feeling <laughs> sorry for himself. Yeah, as one does. Yeah. All the good old days and how things are changing and people aren't really into that stuff anymore now it's the 90s. And, and he's got this uh, young, pretty wife. Little uh, Phoebe Cates. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, poor man's Phoebe Cates. Which would go with Zach Galligan from Gremlins. That's right. Yes. <laughs> She's out there swimming with her friend, someone who's kind of nameless. They're just, you know, hanging out in their bikinis and whatever. And she's probably, mm-hmm. what... 20, 30 years younger? 30 years younger? No, he's in his late 60s, so she's probably about 40 years younger. Okay, yeah, she's pretty young. Yeah, close to 40. I will give it to her, though. She does seem like she does care about him to an extent. I mean, later it doesn't... Yeah, at the beginning. But in the beginning, she does seem fairly nice to him. Yeah, she's like, we don't want you to have a heart attack, old man. But then apparently, well, we'll get to that later. Yeah, he has a bit of a heart condition as, as he's getting older, so he needs to watch his stress and watch out how worked up he gets and things like that. I do like how subtle they were with the heart condition. They were like, what color do you want me to wear to your funeral? Because you're going to die of your heart condition soon. <laughs> so, all right, cool. He has got a heart condition. And so he likes to hang out downstairs, and he's working on new puppets, and he's got Coco sitting there. He's had Coco for decades. In between some of the some of the scenes, you can hear Coco talking to him, or at least mm-hmm. talking somewhere in the distance, and you can't tell. You're not quite sure if Coco's just a figment of his imagination, mm-hmm. or if Coco's real. You've been carving that same head now for two months. You'll make those cheekbones any higher. No, oh, damn it. Don't say it. The last thing I want to hear from you is I told you so. Coco been bothering you again? Coco bothering me? You kidding? Because it's not like Coco's mouth moves or anything like that. And he also, his wife kind of implies that maybe it's he's not taking his medicine right or yeah. like... And they're clever about it because anytime you hear Coco speak, they don't show him no. his face. They only show his face after you hear him speak, so you don't know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, did, it throws me for a bit because yeah, you're not sure... And I thought there was one part here because he calls at one point his wife's name is Ellen. Is it Ellen or Helen? Maybe it's Helen. What I thought was weird is later he calls her kiddo. And I mm. was like, do you really want to call your May December wife kiddo? Like the one that you're, <laughs> she's actually probably a kid. Could mm-hmm. be like, so I'm like, I don't know about Maybe that. Maybe that's like a Woody Allen situation. Well, later like he calls, his ex-wife's daughter. he calls that other guy kiddo. So it kind of balances it out. But mm. at first I was like, oh no. But yeah, she's down here like, oh honey, you're always hiding in the basement, always working on whatever and you never come out in your in your heart condition and i worry about you and she seems sweet and sincere they get a decent place but i wouldn't say they're like i mean i guess they're considered rich he's got money he's got a lot of money for a guy who did a puppet show 30 years earlier or something like that true and nothing says like i feel like they say like i'm so concerned for your heart please don't sit in a basement calmly this could kill you (laughs) 
Well, he's breathing in God knows what down there. Mm. So she brings him his mail, and he opens it, and he finds this letter that he's going to get to go. Is he getting, I think it's an award, right? Is he getting? because yeah, it gets to do a new show. Yeah. That's what they're preparing for. They're going to prepare a new show, yeah. a new puppet show, bring him back, you know, like all the classics and everything, and he's super excited. This is incredible. They want me for a tribute to the golden age of television. What? Yes, for a television special. They want me to do one of the old Coco and Clyde routines. Now, wait a minute. Do you think you're up for this? I mean, they're not giving you much notice. Up to it? Well, I could do it in my sleep. Ellie, this is what I need. I'm, I'm going out of my head. I, I mean, who knows? This could be the beginning of a comeback. And she's just like, oh my gosh, you can't. Mm -hmm. You probably shouldn't, because of your heart condition, you're so fragile. Old. And old. <laughs> and old, and how, you know, like, we can't do this. And I'm, so at this point, I'm guessing the letter's a fake, looking back at it now. Actually, yeah, I guess it could yeah, be. Yeah, because, like, everything had to be set up pretty conspicuously, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it could be fake, because really, like, after all this time, why all of a sudden would they be like... Yeah. I mean, I guess I think they were celebrating, like, a 50-year thing or something. Well, not just that, but, like, if she's looking for an opportunity to do what she does... Well, she but she tries to talk out them out, out of it, though. Yeah. So they're in bed. <laughs> yeah. And he's wearing his old man pajamas. They're cute. And she's wearing all she, black. Yeah, she's he's wearing, like, all a real white. silky nighty. And this is when you're, like, start to, like, oh, they're really cutesy. He's all, like, babe, I want to get in all that. <laughs> and she's all like, I want you, I want you so bad, uh, I want you to do a kickflip off of me, <laughs> or something like that. And, and then, like, while they're going through the, you know. They don't do it. They don't do it, but he's like, you know, they're implying yeah. that uh, he's about to go and get his Viagra in a little bit, or something like that. And she kind of gives that off-camera look. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, they... Wait, do they do it? No, but they, they're like kissing and the lights go off. And like, blah, blah, so, well, blah, I, so they're implying that they do. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, she gets this far off look like she's going to her happy place. Like she's just like. But yeah, it's, no, no, not just a happy place. So like, look, she's like, ooh, she's uh, yeah, so happy. Oh, gosh, I like it. Oh, mm. oh, wow. Oh, uh, mm, you want to? Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is what Methuselah kiss is like. <laughs> kiss, kiss, kiss. Yeah, and the lights go out. And she's all happy, and you're like, oh, this is a sweet yeah, light. Yeah, at first you're like, oh, then, she likes it. Then here, it, yep. she gets the sinister look. She looks at the camera like, I'm going to kill Wait, do you man. see what I do next? I am evil. This is the last time I have to deal with this. Like, she's And just... then they showed hanging dolls to like, yeah, they to do. signify like, the horror of like. There's a lot the of like foreshadowing yeah. in this episode of what's going to happen. So now there's a new guy. Zach Galligan is playing David. And this is Joseph's workshop. I can't tell you how excited I am. I grew up on this stuff as a kid. Didn't we all? Oh, wow. <laughs> Joseph, David's here. Oh, that's funny. He knew you were coming. Why don't you wait down here and I'll go see if I can find him. Okay, thanks. You know, every time you say Zach Galligan, I want you to say Zach Galifianakis. And I want him to be in there. No. Yes. He was busy doing other things. Well, not in the early 90s. But I f just imagine this same role, but modern-day Zach Galifianakis in mm, there. Maybe. It would play so much better. I don't know. He's so, he's so like, kind of innocent about everything. Well, so is Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> so Zach Galligan is playing David, and David is the new assistant to help Joseph with his puppetry, to, like, help him. He wants to learn. Like, he wants to learn the craft, and he's a huge fan Almost to the point where it's almost a little creepy to mm -hmm. me, like just how he's so into him and like trying to get on his good side. And it really doesn't take that long. I don't think he's around for too long. There's the scene where he makes Coco blow up the balloon. Yeah, and he says, cool. how do you do that? And I'm thinking to myself, how do you do that? <laughs> I, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I guess it's attached to the fingers. I'm thinking maybe the fingers might have like an air pump. But like it doesn't hold it shut. It just stays. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It stays all inflated. It is impressive because yeah, he takes this puppet on a string and has him blow up a balloon. Yeah, I mean, it get it doesn't go down. That's probably how I got the young wife. It just never goes down. <laughs> so David's impressed, and he's gonna help him build up the show and learn from him, and I guess hopefully maybe even travel with him to go do this mm -hmm. other show and like be his assistant and all that stuff. He's into robotics, but he still appreciates old puppetry, and he just wants to learn from the best. So he's really enthusiastic. Not robotics, animatronics. Oh, I'm sorry, animatronics. Yes. And he's, Jim Henson would correct you. <laughs> and he's really enthusiastic. And he's probably about the same age of, as uh, Joseph's wife. Yeah. I'd say. So he's probably a younger like guy. Probably like mid to late 20s. And so they're just like hanging out in this dark and dusty basement. 
It's real dusty. You think it would be a little nicer considering you're keeping puppets down there mm. who have been around for decades that you wouldn't want. I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them. He still works with a lot of the old puppets. So, yeah, it's basically him just like, oh my gosh, Joseph, you're so cool. And Joseph like, well, great. I'm glad I get to teach you and that's going to be fun and I can't wait and all this stuff. Fascinating stuff right here. <laughs> so you got some like old pictures there of Donald O'Connor, clearly from his earlier career. Yeah. And it's cool. Like, they, some of their stuff's cool. Like, that phone. Like, they got the old phone with the clip-clop. Yeah, but let's see how she's standing and walking. She's moving her hands. He's just, like, standing there like, I don't care. Yeah. Well, with, with a camera. They're in their bedroom. It's, like, this real ornate four-poster bed. Mm-hmm. And she also, uh, Helen on the side, she goes to, like, an acting class or some sort of thing. And she she's bummed out because he doesn't, it seems like he doesn't let her have a lot of friends or get out and do things without him or, like, she feels kind of trapped, I guess, a little bit, which it's hard, you know, if you're that age. But what would you expect if you're marrying a man who's like 40 years older than you? He's yeah. just such an innocent. <laughs> it makes it yeah. kind of tough. He's just so hopeful and grateful. And, and, and he's got his high-waisted khakis and his little button-up shirt. Mm-hmm. With his extremely dyed hair. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit dark. So now... It, She's left, and I think she went to her acting class or something. I don't know. And then here's all people do. Sit in a dark room in front of a fireplace, brooding. Yeah, talking he's... to themselves while drinking alcohol. I guess there's a fireplace in the basement? The living room or well, where the, are the dying puppets around room him, or then? something. Because he's a puppeteer. Oh, okay. They just follow him everywhere. <laughs> they just follow him. Where he goes, they manifest. <laughs> he doesn't even have to bring them along. They just show up. So you hear like the puppet talking, and then it cuts to him, and he... He's not moving his mouth at yeah, all. Yeah, Coco's been putting bad ideas into Joseph's mind about his yeah. wife being unfaithful. And so now him and David are practicing, and they're doing like a beach scene of Coco and Clyde. Oh, there you are, Clyde. I lost you in that last wave. <gasps> oh, I lost me in that last wave, too. Oh, and by the way, Clyde. Damn it, I keep getting the strings tangled. Well, now, uh, it's okay, it's okay. Don't get frustrated. I... You're using too much wrist. Now just think of the arms and hands as a long appendage reaching down through the controller into the puppet's toes. And David's having issues trying to get the strings to all move and function at the right time and, and he's getting all tangled up and they're just kind of, I don't know, just going over things. And he's even starting to dress kind of like Joseph. He's got the suspenders. Mm. Didn't David, or not David, Joseph do the um, this whole show by himself before? I think so. Why does he need a, a guy now? I guess because he's ancient. I don't know. <laughs> but he seems fine. <laughs> I know. I don't know. Well, I guess to take the pressure off with his heart condition in case... I feel like we're overselling the heart condition <laughs> a little bit here. Because puppetry feel like, is so hardcore. You gotta... I, I feel like that's just going to be like the reason for everything. It's like, why do you think he dyes <laughs> his hair? He's got a real bad it's heart. It's probably his heart condition makes him dye his hair. And so Helen's been watching him and David interact, and she's like, oh, it's so nice. And they're just still practicing. And, and as time's going on, I'm not sure how long it's been, but David is getting better. Mm-hmm. He's, he's learning, and, and they're really starting to build a, like a friendship or a partnership with all of this. This is where they like, I wrote some new lines. Hey, who told oh, you yeah. to write some new lines? I asked him to write some new lines. Yeah. He's up there. Helen comes 90s. down with the snack. How dare you? <laughs> Helen comes down with the snack. Joseph's like, Yeah, David, help me rewrite some of the script or whatever, some of the lines. And she's livid. Like, she's like, Why? Why would you do that? that you know, and he's like, Well, because we're upgrading it from the 50s to the 90s, so like, with new jokes and stuff. And she's like, It's a throwback to the 50s. Like, that would be the point. So, I mean, I, I kind of get where she's coming from, but she's getting a little overly upset. At least I think so. Yeah, I like how updated the jokes were. It was like Cowabunga on yeah. the beach. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, that's updated, all right. Yeah, you should shout Cowabunga, not help me. Yeah, help me, mommy. Help me, mommy. Oh, grabbing his heart. Yeah, and so her just yelling. Like, it, it, it must be a really sensitive heart condition because her just getting worked up mm-hmm. gets him so worked up that he has to sit down and try to breathe. He's like, hang on, I just need to catch my breath. I'm fine. So they're just, like, wearing them down. A bit yeah, they're here. slowly making them on edge. And then David's like, you know, I totally understand. Like, he's kind of on his side. Like, I get why you're why you'd be upset about your wife. She doesn't know, you know, like, mm-hmm. we're all this stuff. And so they're trying to, like, pit him against oh, each other. Oh, and the eyes, do you see the, do the eyes just move? I don't think so. Oh. Coco's watching, though. Coco's But I could have sworn the eyes moved just a little bit there. It may have. But see, that's what it's doing to us as the audience. We're asking ourselves, like, did the eyes just move? Yeah. Because Coco's still there, and he's hearing everything they're saying. And Coco's kind of creepy. He's... Coco's very <laughs> creepy, as all puppets and marionettes are. He's got, like, a red fluffy head. and Oh, and this is when Joseph finds out that acting class is not on Wednesdays, but on Tuesdays. 
and yeah. has been for a year. So where is Helen going on Wednesdays? Yeah. So now he's really upset because Coco's already kind of put it in his head, and now David's like, well, she wasn't going, telling him that basically she wasn't doing the things she said she was going to be doing. There's a part where Helen comes up to him. Yeah. Helen comes up to Joseph, and the way she walks up, and she's like, how's what's-his-name working out? And it's like, you're the one who set him up with him. Yeah. I mean, what's-his-name? Like, And here they're fighting alone. Yeah, but they know he's listening. <laughs> Do they? They are there's well they're yelling enough to She turned down the lights and everything for this dark moody scene. So Dave, and she yeah. went in her like evening wear. Yeah, she comes down looking all like fancy and he's leaving and they're making a big scene David and Helen are. I don't think you should come back tomorrow. What have you got against me? I don't understand why you hate me so much. I'd like to do this as quietly as possible. But if it's a matter of money, I'm sure we can come to some agreement. Is that what you think this is all about? <laughs> you are disgusting. Do you know that? By the way, how long have you been cheating on your husband? How dare you? How fucking dare you talk to me Stop it, you two. Will you please stop it? Did you hear what he said to me? Are you going to let him get away with that? I want you to fire him. I can't do the show without him. I need him. You need me, and I don't want him in my house. Joe, it's okay. Of course, Joseph hears it, because they were being kind of loud. Yeah. And so he comes up, and he's like, guys, just can we not do this? So then uh, Helen and Joseph get in a big fight, you know, all this stuff about who's on whose side. And she's she's upset, again, because she doesn't get to have any friends, even though it's not true, because she was out there with some chick at And the she pool. literally just says, I'm going to go see a friend right now. Yeah, so she has friends, but she's still like, I can't believe I have to ask you for do everything. I'm sick of this. Mm -hmm. So he's upset. Joseph is, and they both left. David and Helen have left. He runs upstairs to their bedroom. He's trying to find evidence that she's been cheating. Mm -hmm. And Coco, I guess, gives him the idea to go through the drawers, because you can hear Coco's voice. Oh, Coco. Oh, Coco. And so he starts opening up the drawers of the clothes and things, and he finds some l letters all stacked up, and he pulls out, like, the sh shortest love letter. You want to hear my theory? What? That's a different actor. Oh, the hands? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I feel like they couldn't get him for that. <laughs> he was like, I can't be bothered to it's rummage. like, no. If my face isn't in the shot, I'm not doing it. Oh, it is Ellen. Okay, it's Ellen. Okay. I thought so. Or is it Alan? <laughs> it's Ellen. Or is it Esther? But it's like the shortest love. It's like, my dearest Ellen, last night was amazing. I love whatever it's real short and then it's just all my love rick and so he's like well who's rick you know yeah. like what is going on oh yeah i love how good you make me feel that's the whole letter it's a great love letter i feel like i should copy that one day so if you're listening to this and you get that letter <laughs> that's where he got it from so now he's back to the fireplace again and he's just drinking straight vodka just pouring himself glasses yeah totally not water S clearly vodka <laughs> sitting there drinking it and talking to coco who's sitting near him still not moving his mouth but you can hear coco being like you know because well, they don't show him while you hear the talking that's true but he so also doesn't know. move or anything not while he's on screen i know so we gotta keep an eye on this coco and mm -hmm. so he's in front of the fire just getting drunk and talking to coco and i think he's probably burned the letters they the fact that they showed the fire makes me think that he threw him in there well the fires were there earlier too he goes there when he's all angry he's like mm, fire and so Coco's like, hey. I sure to listen to you, Coco. You knew. You knew. It wasn't exactly hard to see coming. She's young and beautiful. You're just a tired old man. What am I going to do? You mean if you were you? Or if you were me? There's like, some, for some reason, a knife sticking out of the table. Well, because he was carving the face of that other puppet earlier. Okay. I'm just saying. But he left it open and, like, shoved it into the board. Like, it's sticking As out. As one does. There's, like, where's your... Don't you have a knife sticking out of this table somewhere? No, I don't. Oh, I that's have, weird. I have a cat lint brush ro roller on the table. That's See, what, that's that's your version that's of it. Version and of if it. this were a story about you, you would have beaten someone to death with a cat lint roller. And so Coco's like, divorces cost money, as if he don't have no mm -hmm. money. You know, murder is free. So he's like, you should kill her. And he's like, no. No, I actually uh, like the line where he was like, what should I do? And Coco's like... What should you do if you were you? Or oh, yeah. what should you do if you were me? <laughs> Coco's I was like, oh, like okay, that's pretty clever. And he's like staring at the knife. He's like, no, I can't. I can't. I'm conflicted. I have a heart condition. I have a heart condition. I can't, I can't be doing this. This knife will send me over the edge. Do it, boss. Or whatever Coco sounds like. <laughs> yeah, he passes out because he's drinking straight vodka. And he wakes up and the, the knife is gone. I don't feel like he drank much, by the way. Yeah, well, he has a heart condition. He so does probably... have a heart condition. He did it. So. 
It, it didn't yeah. take a lot. And so he wakes up and he finds that the strings have all been cut. So Coco do you or know someone... Why, do you know why the strings have all been cut? Because Coco got out. No, because he's got a heart condition. <laughs> so Coco or someone has taken Coco and cut the strings. And he hears this screaming upstairs. And so now he's worried. He's like, Ellen, oh my gosh, Okay, Ellen. so here's what I want to know. How did they know to scream then? Has That's she been true. screaming for like the last two hours and then he just woke up to it? Was it like, okay, it's been five minutes, let's scream again? Or did they somehow know he woke up, knew he woke up, and then they're like, okay, now it's time to scream. Are we finding out that this is not a flawlessly written script <laughs> and that there are some plot holes? No, there's never any plot holes. No, but there's just knife stab wound holes. Because that's true. Yeah, maybe she had been screaming and then it finally pulled him out of his mm. drunken heart condition gotcha. stupor. So he comes running upstairs and he bursts through the ba- the bedroom door. And in front of their four poster bed is Ellen and she's laying on the floor and she's covered in blood. And Coco is on top of her, creepily stabbing her over and over in the stomach. And she's mm-hmm. screaming. And this is just enough, which as it would be because it's a puppet killing your wife, just enough to push him over the edge and give him a heart attack. Wait, he has a heart condition? <laughs> Since when? When did they, why did they not introduce this earlier? It's this newfound heart condition we didn't know huh. about. And so... Fascinating. So he has a pretty good face. He's just, like, freaking out. He grabbing his, uh, his arm and stuff. He's, like, half heart attack, half stroke, I feel like. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And so he and falls over, down. and he's still kind of with them, I think. Because like you can hear the heartbeat. Yeah, like, his boom. pulse is fading. Boom. And then that's when the be- bathroom door opens to, like, the ensuite, and out comes David. But David is not David. David is Rick. So this has been a bit of a con. (sighs) Oh my gosh, what? You mean a Tales from the Crypt episode is about a con? Yeah. It's kind of a fun one, though. No, it's fun. It's just so overly conned. Like, they had to fake the fighting and fake this. Well, because they were in an acting class together, so they knew how to act. I know, but like, what's the point? Like, they didn't have to fake any of the fight. I guess (laughs) the faking the fighting was just to get the heart condition, which we didn't know about until just now. Maybe Uh, (laughs) Maybe, though, being actors... They were like, we might as well practice. A real question. I think this is the question that the whole episode hinges on. Mm-hmm. So we thought that the acting class was on Wednesday. But then you find out she's lying. Yeah. And he says it's on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. But he's been lying the whole time. So the real question is, when's the acting class? Is there even an is acting Is there class? an acting class? But when is it? I think that's really important. I think maybe there was an acting class, and then they just now get together <laughs> on those nights. This is their graduation. Yes. They acted someone to death. So this isn't the real Coco. This is an animatronic Coco. Rick has built this and was controlling it from the bathroom and walks over, you know, kind of like introduces himself to the dying body of Joseph. Yeah. Not only are they like murders, but they're just like straight cold. Yeah. They really rub it in. What's up, old man? You dying? (laughs) Ha ha ha. You're like, oh, hey, man, sorry you dying. <laughs> he got that pompous little smile on his face as he checks for a pulse. He's like, this is my girl now. And then they just like sloppily make out in front of him. Like, Yeah. It's like, come on, man. He wasn't that bad of a guy. It's like as his body's getting stiff, you know what else is getting stiff? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> I feel like that's a, ni- a real knife, right? Like, I don't know. That might isn't not Isn't that still kind of poking her? Like, eh. So this animatronic thing, and she's acting like she's she's dead. And he comes over. And like I said, they, they're all like, oh, kissy, kissy. And excited, and she's covered in blood, which I feel like probably got somewhere in the bedroom. He does tell her to go get cleaned up, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I feel like something would have got left behind. See, you can, so what he did there was he tried to make her smile like this. Yeah, like a puppet. But from the camera angle, you, you can see him to <laughs> like he's gonna force her face tell up. Tell her to be quiet. Else. Like Yeah, you just like see the hand push the face up, and that's it. But they really did rub it in. Mm-hmm. The fact that they're like right they're here. Like, they're kissing like on him. Yeah. They're like on him they're making like, out right yeah, there. Yeah, we've been together for like a year. Maybe. And it's not just kissing, they're like biting each other's lips and everything. Yeah, it's pretty involved. So basically, Rick wants to work more in his animatronics and he needs money, and who's better money than Joseph's? So if they mm-hmm. could get Joseph to die because of his undeni- like, we didn't know, but I mean yeah, his heart know. condition, then they could take that money and he can do whatever he wants and, you know, they're in love or whatever. And so Joseph dies, and they're like, okay, cool, where's the real Coco? And Rick's like, well, I put Coco... Under the bed? Under the bed, yeah. <laughs> Under the bed. He's over there. Yeah, and so she takes the animatronic Coco and goes to get a shower and get cleaned up. And he's like, cool, I'll go get the other Coco. Why? I don't know. They could have just left Coco under the bed. He goes to look under the bed, and there's nothing there. Dun, dun, dun. And then when he stands up, or it's kind of Okay, but here's the thing. Kind of You creepy. don't see the face. You don't see Coco's face at all. That's true, you don't. So and what I'm wondering is like, have is... Have already... And when the police come in later, they don't say anything about an old man lying dead on the floor. 
I'm wondering, did he transcend into Coco? Was he on the floor? I don't even think he was in the end. That's what I mean. They didn't say anything oh, about it. Like, that. was he even there? Just so, like, did his body metamorphosize into Coco? Uh, hmm, and I think become so. Become the puppet himself. So what happened is Joseph pretty much becomes Coco. Yeah. I guess he could have done it already by now. I don't. I mean, his yeah, because they went. don't say the face. It's that yeah. no one's there to look at him. They don't show the face. They just ho- show Coco's little fluffy red head. And then you see this knife come up in slash slash. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to the next scene, and that's when Ellen is coming in from her shower. One issue with that, though. Yeah. Um, what size bed was that? King? Probably at least a queen. At least a queen. Dave Rick, Rick Dave, is on one end. Yeah. Coco is on the other end with little puppet arms and slashes his throat. <laughs> I want to point out the logistical complications in that scene right there. Just pointing Thank that out. Thank you for pointing that out. You're welcome. So she walks in and the room is dark. And so she's like, what's... As every room in the house is all the time. <laughs> she's like, what's going on? Rick's sitting on the side of the bed kind of hunched over. And she's like, what are you doing? We need to get going. What's going on? You can see that he's got some strings hooked to him. And it's pretty cool. He's yeah. he, He's been turned into a puppet. And he raises up. And he raises slowly up with the strings. And then it's gross. Like his head tilts back and it just exposes that his neck has been slit open. And she screams. Right. Well, she's um, stunned. She's, she's stunned in the thing point. <laughs> yeah, now she screams. Because it's good because she's like, what? And then all of a sudden you hear a voice go up here. And then mm. Rick's arm gets lifted up to point. Mm-hmm. And you look up and the puppet's above. You don't see it, but the puppet comes down. No, the, his arm comes well, his down arm with a knife. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't know how the strength of Rick puppet. I think it's just like, like yeah. you drop a dead arm with a knife. You just have to, how do you aim it? Like all she had to do was take a step back. There's some supernatural work, like, so I guess it doesn't she matter. She would have been like, and you missed me. Yeah, because Rick... And you're on strings, so you can't come and chase me. Rick has the knife, and then, yeah, the puppet, the Coco puppet or whatever, makes him lift his arm and bring it down, and somehow that kills her. Anyway, it's supernatural. Anything can happen. Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? So now the police are here. Okay, but see, they're... Who called the police? That, oh, I think, well, she must have, because he told her to call the police. Yeah, but I figured she would have got clean first, and then, like... Well, do you know, the police will be here at least five minutes, or she's going to clean up and stuff, I don't know. I'll assume she called the police. I don't know. The other day I learned that the police take at least 45 minutes to get to my house. Then there you go. She called the police. She had plenty of time. So they show up and they're like, wait, do you see this? This is crazy. And they're like, oh, I've seen everything. And he's like, you haven't seen this. Mm -hmm. And then they go in. And and nothing on the floor. You don't show it. They don't show it. Yeah. But they don't say anything about a body. Yeah. So maybe Joseph's not even there. I didn't think about that. No. That's cool. Good thing I'm here. I know. This is why I like to have people on. Or am I here? Uh, Do you have a heart condition? You'll never know. (laughs) So they walk in, and it looks almost like a little stage. Like, it's mm-hmm. in the four-poster oh, bed. Yeah, that so I didn't put together. So the bed becomes like the stage. Yeah, the bed becomes a stage with the, with, uh, the, with the drapes and stuff. That's clever. And Ellen and Rick are strung up, and they got all the strings, and they're strung up like puppets. And they walk over, and they're like, oh, my gosh, that's crazy. And then it shoots up to the top, and you see that the Coco puppet has the face of Joseph. And it's, The creepiest form it's, of Joseph it's ever. It's kind of creepy, yeah. It's like a real <laughs> shiny, wide-eyed dimply chin yep. creepy face and so joseph and it's like laughing or whatever I i'm think. surprised they didn't like w- make him wink i know right so ellen and rick got what's coming to them unfortunately joseph died too and now he's in a puppet he'll live forever as the I, new chucky doll he, and puppets don't have hearts so he no longer has a heart condition i feel like chucky had a heart that was ripped apart at some point or another did he i don't think he bled Oh, Chucky? Yeah. Oh, did, yeah. Did he bleed? Oh, yeah. There was, like, whole ep- movies where he had, like, parts of his body ripped apart. Yeah, I know that, but, like, like Yeah, he bled. Bleeding. He bled. Like, he had internal organs and everything. Well, because I know at one point, like, sometimes he would get real far on his ritual, and then it would, like, I don't know. There's, like, seven or eight of those things. Though, by Cult of Chucky, he was looking pretty rough. Not what I want. Anyway, keep talking. Hang on. I'm going to look up. Does Chucky bleed? I mean, if you just look at this picture... He's stitched up, but that's, like, red blood going on there. Yeah, but... I mean, I figure if he looks like this at some point, he bleeds. But is that from the movie, or is that from that's, the No, movie? that's a doll, but it's from the movie. Here, yeah. the scene from the movie is... Right. <laughs> I like how there, someone, someone looked up, how did Chucky and Tiffany have a baby? It's a movie about supernatural dolls. Just let it go. Internal logic, I tell you. So I guess he does bleed. I don't think he bled, like, in the first one, though. Maybe not the first one, though. Okay, so that's the end of the episode. It cuts back to the Crypt Keeper, and they are really leaning on these. He's upside down. He's got his head in a guillotine, and they're really mm-hmm. leaning on the eyebrows on this one. Like, they're just jumping all over the place. Oh, yeah. It's really fun. Yeah, the bounce, bounce, bounce. He's very expressive. It's fun, and he's talking, you know, all the puns and things. <laughs> Crypt Keeper, you're so punny. 
And the best Crypt Keeper pun is... As for me, kitties, it seems my pain in the neck was more serious than I thought. But I'm almost finished with my scarapy. <laughs> the little chiropractor drops Bones. the guillotine and cuts his head off. And... and then he's like, that's what I call paying in full. And I'm like, again, I, I'm, 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 I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, they're really reaching for it in this one. So there's no IMDb trivia for this episode. Uh, that's the end of season four, episode 12. You Strung said, along. That's what I call getting a real weight off my shoulders. I don't know. I feel like you could have done something with like heads will roll or something like no, that. No, but like a weight off your shoulders? Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know. Pain in the neck was kind of good. Right? Pain in the neck? Yeah. Or like, I guess I'll be heading off now. <laughs> something. I feel like if we can write better puns off the cuff like this, then they should have done better. I don't know. It's also 27 years later, right? No. I don't I don't third. think us being in 2019 <laughs> has improved our pun game. I feel like they had just as good of a game. The then. 90s had some good puns. Cairo Hector was fine. Cairo Hector was good, yes. So yeah, that's the end of Strung Along. The next episode is season four, episode 13, Werewolf Concerto. <laughs> Adami, thank you for being on here today. You're, you're welcome. I've, I've enjoyed my time here. And I just... I just just want to say god bless you great great yep well You're, that's what happens when you come in through town you've been here for what 24 hours and i put you to work yeah i feel like it's it's been a it's been a long ride but uh this is really what i came here for <laughs> this is the culmination of my life uh if i had a heart condition it could kick in now for all i care because it does not get better than this as far as you know well and the new golden girl shirt i got you hell yeah <laughs> shady pines so I don't know if you guys can see this. <laughs> they can't see it. They, they can't see this? They is can't it, see your this, shady pine shirt. Is, the, is this a camera? It's not a camera. And you're just tapping it now and making it record your taps. <laughs> I know. If only I, I studied audio engineering in college. Oh, yeah, that's true. You did. Thank you guys for downloading and for listening to this episode. If you want to send me an email with questions or comments or anything, it's at goodeveningpod at gmail.com. There's also a Twitter page you can follow at GEC Podcast. That's at G-E-K Podcast. There's a Facebook page, and I also really appreciate five-star reviews. You can put those on, I think, Stitcher, iTunes, even Facebook. You can leave some reviews on there. Again, thank you so much for listening, and uh, look, ASMR. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.